Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and it is Saturday which means I am back with an Inspired Saturdays collaboration. I hope you'll stick around, see who inspired me this week, and find out how you can go see how I inspired her. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. You might already know about my Inspired Saturdays collaboration here on my YouTube channel, but if you don't, I'll explain it really quickly and then we'll get started with today's video. I like to team up with another crafty YouTuber on most Saturdays so we can create a new project that was inspired by the other one. The projects and the inspiration pieces are kept a secret until the day that our videos go live. That means it's just as fun for us as it is for you. If you're a crafty YouTuber who would like to be considered for a Saturday, I do have a link in the description box below to the video with the details. The video does refer to 2020 because I recorded it last year, but you can just apply that to the beginning of 2021 and the application itself is updated. This week I'm teaming up with Helen of Crafty Mama Diaries. I first saw her in action on Mary Gunn's Craft Roulette and I just loved her attitude and her creations. So I reached out to her asking her if she'd like to join me and luckily she accepted. Make sure that once you're done with my video today, you check out her video, which will be at the very top of that description box below. I know that she's going to knock your socks off. As I was perusing Helen's YouTube channel and Instagram account to narrow down what I was going to use today, I came upon the Instagram post that you see on the screen now. And there was lots of eye candy in just that single post. I then discovered that she actually has a process video of these cards here on her YouTube channel. It was part of a 10 cards, one kit video that she has done. Now both this Instagram post and that YouTube video are in the description box below if you want to go check those out. Now I probably could have taken inspiration from all 10 and made a lot of cards today, but I decided to narrow it down. So what I'm gonna do, you'll see that she used a lot of gold embossing on her cards, ink blending, she did some metallic splatters in the background of her card, and I'm gonna kind of put all that together today to create one card. And since she created those all using a kit, I'm gonna do the same. I will be using the stamp and ink from the latest paper pumpkin kit, which is called Bouquet of Hope. I thought you might like to see some ways that you can use the stamp set and the ink spot from those kits when you're finished with the consumables. From my own stash, I got out some Versamark ink, Detail Gold embossing powder, and two Gina K Designs inks that I might end up coloring with them later. I'm not positive yet, but they, I did get them out. It is Wild Dandelion and Dusty Rose. I got out my ink blending brush for my green. I made a top fold card base, and this is out of Nina Solar White. I think it's 100 pound or 80 pound, I'm not sure. I just like the way it blends better on this cardstock than what I usually use for bases. And finally, I will be using this stenciling mask that I made. I created this in silhouette and cut it out of Duralar. It is um, definitely heavier than vellum. I'm not sure how many uses I'll get out of it, but I have already practiced with it once. It cleaned up very well and I'm ready to go again. Now I do want to show you a couple things on it and explain it before I get into the process. But in the corners, I made little, I guess, right angles so that I can line up either my full card front four and a quarter by five and a half or a four by five and a quarter piece. This just helps me later just to make sure that I get a nice even border. I will just line it up with these cuts. Let's get crafty. 
I need to allow my blended piece to dry for a while so I can stamp on it later. So that's what I'm gonna start by doing today. To hold my card in place on the template, I will be using some blue painter's tape. Once I have pulled off a couple pieces, I stick those on my hand to detack them a little bit. And now I'm gonna show you how I line up my card base. This is a full size, so it goes in the outer right hand corners, but I just make sure that both of those top two corners are in the corner of the template. Once I have both of those in place, I'm going to take a piece of that blue tape and tape that down. Now this is on the back of the card, so even if it tears the paper a little bit, it'll be okay. Then I'm going to start my blending. Now, this cardstock and this ink is not the best for blending. I did have to go over quite a few layers with this and there is some splotchiness, but you know what? Later when I do the stamping and add the embellishments, you cannot even tell. And this is just another way that you can work with the supplies that you have. While that dries for a while, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the other parts of the card. I got out a scrap of that same Nina Solar White cardstock as the card base, and I will be stamping the floral bouquet on this and heat embossing it with detail gold embossing powder. Once I had that in place, I picked it up with the door of my Misty, and I used my embossing buddy to help that powder stick only to where I want it. Now I do always keep a dry brush handy off in the wings in case I do have to wipe away any stray powder, but that embossing buddy definitely helps. Once I have the powder on the image, I bring in my heat tool and I heat set that. And now we're gonna do a little coloring. To color my image today, I'm gonna be doing some water coloring with those three inks I showed you before. I'll just use this clear acrylic block for my palette, and for my water brush, I got out the smallest one I have from Arteza. To get started, I'm gonna pounce some of that green ink from the kit onto my acrylic block, and when I do stuff like this, I start with my brush where the shadow would be, and then I just wipe it to the outside or in the rest of that open area. This way I get some shading, but I don't have to use different colors. Now keep in mind this cardstock is not meant for water coloring, so you really do have to do it all at one time. You can't put in all of the shadows and then come back and try to put in the lighter shades because that original line that you put in that's dark will not move on that paper. Another thing to keep in mind is I started with my darkest color and that is not usually what you wanted to do, but when I originally started coloring this, I didn't know if I was only gonna color the green, just kind of do an accent color, but I did decide to go ahead and bring in the pink and the yellow. I'll be coloring the bow in with the pink using pretty much the same technique that I just discussed, and then the flowers will be a mixture of pink and yellow. Once I had all of my coloring done, I could then just wipe off that acrylic block and it's ready to be used for stamping. Next, I took my fine tip scissors and I fussy cut around that bouquet. My ink blended piece did have a while to dry because I did have to run a few errands after I stamped and colored that bouquet. So I brought in my Misty and that same floral stamp to do a little bit more stamping on the background. Now, because I only want the flowers to show up in the corners and I want it to be contained within that ink blended area, I did go ahead and leave my card base with that template on it that I use for stenciling. I will be once again stamping this with Versamark ink and embossing it with that detail gold embossing powder. I just love me some detail gold embossing powder. Now before I pour the powder on, I did go ahead and remove the template just so none of the powder kind of stuck to the edges of that accidentally. I poured on that powder, tapped off the excess, and then brought in my heat tool to heat set that. Now the card did warp a little bit here. That's gonna be one of the disadvantages of doing a single layer card like this. I did end up putting this in a book underneath some other books for about 30 minutes altogether, and this did help to flatten it out. That was a tip that I learned from Kathy Zilski. 
While that card was flattening out in the books, I went ahead and did the rest of my stamping. I pulled in one of the labels from the paper pumpkin kit to stamp my sentiment on. The sentiment reads, I'll always be here for you. This will be stamped with Versamark and heat embossed with detail gold embossing powder. I may as well keep it all the same and go with that theme, huh? While I work on getting that sentiment ready, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or the question of the video. And this is where I'm going to need your help. I have noticed lately that my heat tool does not seem to be melding my powder as quickly as it used to. So that means here soon I might be in the market for a new heat embossing tool. So today's question is, what is your favorite heat embossing tool to use? What have you found works the best and has longevity to it? The one that I currently have, I have had that since right after I learned to heat emboss probably, so the late 90s. It's definitely been a great one and who knows, maybe I'll just end up buying the same brand again, but I thought that I would ask for your opinions. Make sure to leave those answers in the comment section below and don't forget to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know that you want me to see your answer. On many of Helen's cards in her video, she did use some metallic gold watercolor to make splatters in the background. I decided instead of doing that, I would use this brush spatter background from My Favorite Things. It gives kind of the same effect, but it's not as messy. When I placed my stamp onto my card front, I did place it so that those gold splatters would come out into the white border around my stenciling. I just like that. I thought it added a little bit more motion to the card front. This is pretty much the same as before, so I'll speed through this process. Once the spatters were in place, it was time to finish up my focal point and the card. I played around a little bit with the layout, trying to figure out where I wanted the sentiment to go. I didn't want it to cover the bow or many of the flowers, but I did want it to go on top of the bouquet. So what I did is I brought in my little trimmer and I just kind of cut that bouquet in half. I'm going to adhere this to the back of the sentiment strip with art glitter glue. Now if you have not watched my videos before or seen me use art glitter glue, you don't know that I absolutely love that beaded charm that sits in the top of my bottle. That has kept me from losing that pin so many times. I bought this off of a YouTube crafter and I will link her video in the description box below so you can get more details if you want to get one for yourself. I let that sit for about five minutes to dry and then it was time to get that put onto the card front. I do want it to pop up off there just a little bit, so I brought in my big blue roll of foam tape in the 3 8 inch width. I placed some of this on the back, pulled the release paper, and then centered this on the card front. And here are some looks at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I was inspired to make today's card. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Now don't forget to go visit Helen's video. Once again, it is linked at the very top of the description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.